Hey Pierce, Ware County and the rest of America. Today I'm here with Mr. Lamar and Quinn, former corrections officers at Ware State Prison. As you all know, from, from Georgia to California, there was a prison riot at Ware State Prison located in Waycross, Georgia late last night on Saturday, August 1st, 2020. Unedited Real Talk right now was within eye and air shot of those gates. Now, as always, there will be many different versions, especially if the truth is suppressed. We are here today to talk about the incident, as well as many other much needed to hear situations. This is not scripted, it is unedited Real Talk right now. All right, my name is Lamar. I've been employed at Ware State Prison for a total of 10 years. And here recently, in the past around 18 months, we've been, been dealing with a big battle of our upper management making us bend and break policy to meet daily operating procedures. And that's what me and Quinn here is today to talk to y'all about it because we have a lot of people reaching out to us that are currently still employed at Ware State Prison. I left two weeks ago. Quinn left about a month ago. And there's a lot of people that are scared to speak out to the public because of fear of retaliation and fear of getting fired because that's the way that place is out there. And I'm going to let Quinn tell you a little bit about it and I'm going to come back and tell you about some things going on out there right now. All right, so I began with Ware State Prison in 2012, July of 2012 to be exact. Uh, as he said, I left last month, so about a month shy of eight years out there. Um, the staffing's always fluctuated, but for the most part, we never got below the minimum amount of staff it takes to run a shift, which I believe is 33, 37. 37. And, but within the last year, it's gotten really bad, and we were lucky to have 10 people show up for briefing in the mornings. And I remember when they came to us in, what, November of last year? Yeah. They came to us in November, and they said, we're gonna have to start shutting down the control rooms. And what that means is, used to, there was two officers per building. One officer stayed in that control no matter what, that way you would always have a, uh, someone with a radio and a landline to call for assistance when needed. Also, to open the door and let you in and out. Well, when they told us that, that we would have to shut down control rooms, me and him were the first two to stand up and say, well, how do y'all expect us to do our jobs? Are you gonna lock the inmates down? They said, no, we're just gonna give you keys to get in and out of the dorms, keys to get in and out of the control rooms. And when you take those keys in, um, you'll be expected to just turn the keys and get in and out, which that's no big deal. But the problem with that is, if I'm the only one working that building and I go in that building with that set of keys, now the inmates have direct access to that set of keys. All it takes is, 50, there's 50 of them in there in one dorm. And there's one of me, you know. All it takes is one of them deciding to take your keys and, and they can take over, as we've seen now. And not to mention that bringing keys into the building is against policy. It is. Uh, you're not allowed to do that at all. And when they started coming out telling us about bringing, and the reason why we're bringing up the keys is because that was the main factor of what happened last night. Last night you had three supervisors basically running the whole prison last night, which our prison holds 1,546 inmates. And when those three supervisors got jumped and they got their keys taken from them, which well, they were in one building. But once those inmates got those keys from those three supervisors, they were then had access to four more buildings plus the lockdown units, which was actually seven buildings total. Mm -hmm. They had access to seven buildings total, so those inmates let everybody out last night. There was around six, 700 inmates running loose for a good hour and a half, two hours. From our understanding, now we have no dog in the fight no more. Like I said, we're not there anymore, but there's a lot of coworkers and friends we still have out there. And this is why we're coming out telling everybody about it because we're not afraid of them. We stood up to them while we were there and we're gonna continue standing up for them because we're gonna fight for what we believe is right. And right is right and those policies were put in place for a reason. And the reason was to keep stuff from happening like last night. And if they would have followed policy, when it's, it's bad enough it happened that officers were assaulted in, in, in the dorm which it began in. But if policy had been followed and those keys had not been taken into that dorm, the incident would have been contained to one dorm. Instead, it spreads to the whole compound, or almost the whole compound. And as he mentioned, uh, I think it was possibly 650 inmates. That's what those buildings that were, were, were out would hold, 650 inmates were out to, uh, I believe six officers showed up for shift last night? Six officers showed up for shift, but you had the main supervisor last night was running C, D, E, and F. Mm -hmm. Now out of respect for these, for these coworkers, we're not gonna mention any names for respect for them and their families, but we're gonna tell you the numbers they've given y'all. They, I think they said in their last, uh, the, 
uh, GDOC said that there was two officers hurt. There's at least four we know of. And one was in pretty serious condition. He, had, he got life lighted out. And we do know there's at least three inmates hurt uh, that got stabbed. But there's probably going to be more than that after they today. They're going to go through. Like I said, they're short staff. They're going to be even shorter staff now because there's going to be a lot of people going to quit over this. There's going to be a lot of people that's going to be, there's, there's people that's upset right now, and they're going to add this on top of that, and that's going to run them out the door just as fast too. And now back to what we were saying about the keys and all, was the stuff that they're not going to tell you, and we got to explain to y'all because y'all understand is the stuff they're doing that's illegal and wrong is they hire a bunch of new officers and want to get the, the veterans out because they know how we feel and how we know how to run a prison. Well, when that started coming in place where they were making us run buildings by ourselves or sometimes one officer has to run two to three to four buildings by ourselves they took the sop books out of the control rooms which sop books are standing operating procedure books that tell you how to run those buildings properly well they took all them out you won't find one in at where state prison anymore because they didn't want you bringing that up to their attention and they'd have to do something about it i, I i've had to gone up to the deputy warden's office and the warden's office a couple times because of these issues and basically all they tell you and i know they told him something he'll, he'll tell you what they told you was you need to get with a program and you can find another job and they told him they said no one's holding a gun to your head and making you work here so basically and just for record because i want to make sure y'all understand we're not doing this to take an officer side or inmate there's inmates that's going to be putting their lives at risk too because of shortness of staff mm -hmm. and also the public this affects the staffing and this affects the inmate population because the shortness of staff and the lack of, of the negligence from the administration out there has put not only officers lives in danger but it's put the inmates lives in danger so this is a, a subject and a topic and this negligence has been brought up affects everyone from all sides of this it's not just the officers that are in danger it's not just the inmates are in danger but it's everyone who steps foot inside that institution is in danger right now and uh i think it's it's, it's a subject and a topic that everyone can come together on and, and see that, that this negligence here is, is really, it, it could have, and it still could cost somebody their life. And also, real quick before we get off, I just want to mention that, you know, they have slowly been taking stuff away from officers to protect themselves in situations like this. Like, we're allowed to carry OC spray to protect ourselves. We're all certified with OC spray. We're all, we're all supposed to have handcuffs at bare minimum to protect ourselves or to de-escalate a situation to contain an inmate in some, in a situation like this, they took cuffs from us, batons, pepper spray, tasers. and tasers, and this is what you gotta fight against, just with your fist. So I just wanna bring that to everybody's attention. That's a, that's a daily struggle for those officers out there at Ware State Prison. Hold that up, please, that big one. Just to show y'all the size show y'all the size of these things these ain't just regular pokers or anything like that and this, and we got plenty more to show y'all mm -hmm. but just to, to sum up what happened last night i don't want them telling y'all that the reason why this this right broke because they're good at covering up stuff the reason why this right broke out because simultaneously they had a power shortage last night throughout the whole community and the, the rumors were starting to spread that they were going to say that that was one of the reasons why the inmates got out of the cells and started doing that. Well, no, we have emergency generators at Ware State Prison that kick on like that. And I've been through many, this man's been through many uh, blackouts, many storms, and never, not one time, has any cell door, day room door, building room door, door, control room door ever popped open because of lack power of power. Outage. It doesn't happen. So don't let them tell y'all that and, that's the reason. And also the inmates weren't even locked down yet. They, uh, on the weekends, they don't lock down till uh, one o'clock in, in the morning, which is, a, which is a big problem. We're not trying to take away freedom or rights from inmates, but when you have six officers watching 1,600 inmates at night, especially night shift when you know they're gonna be shorter, there should have been upper management and just a, lead, a lack of leadership they had last night that led up to what happened. When you have six officers working at a prison, the other things should have been taken in place to make sure the safety of the officers and the inmates should have been the number one priority as long as they were met with their policy, which a lot of people don't know about. 
And another big issue that, that they're having out there at Ware now is the, like I said, the current administration, they don't, it's just negligence. And I know I've said that several times, but used to, and he can attest to this, um, the warden used to have his boots on the ground at nine o'clock every morning doing a daily inspection. He would Monday through Thursday inspect every dorm. Every inmate in there would see the warden face to face and he would inspect. And under this current administration, this particular warden here, he only comes around when there's a uh, regional director or commissioner that comes into town. You might see a deputy warden once every uh, once a month, maybe once every other week if you're lucky. The captain will come around semi regularly, but outside of him, that's it. You're not yeah, you're not going to see anybody coming dorm to dorm, and making sure and that holds these inmates accountable every day when they see a higher up and an administrator come into that dorm. It just helps them. It helps hold them accountable, and they understand. All right, this is the guy that's running the show. This is what's going on. And it helps when you have that authority figure come in and out of those dorms every single day. It gives the inmates some routine. And when not, the inmates get into a, uh, not just inmates, but officers. They get lax on policy mm -hmm. and lax on doing their jobs when they don't see supervisors every day. So that's a big problem right there, uh, in my opinion, and in, in why it's gotten so bad. That's all we got for now. If anybody want to have any more questions, we'll be, we'll be happy to answer anything y'all got about how to run a prison or major key factors that happened last night. Because it's only... This is just this is a retaliation scheme from three weeks ago from an inmate that got murdered at Ware State who was a Muslim inmate who got murdered by Bloods. This leaked over into last night. And it's going to continue to leak over. And it's not just Ware State Prison. It's the whole state of Georgia. They're short on staff. They're breaking policies and procedures. They're making their officers do it. And I just want to raise awareness of that. And maybe somebody somewhere will see something and something to get done about it. Well, thank y'all. This is unedited real talk right now. I'm McKinney Faith with Mr. Lamar and Clint.